The different learning styles can be discovered through a learning style inventory. And when you do this and you understand your own learning style, you can increase your self-esteem, you can learn effectively, your motivation is going to increase, and even retention of what you're learning. Giving learners a focus of control in all educational environments. So using these styles, students then can even morph an inactive learning situation into a more or active and even engaging opportunity. Now visual learners, this is the V, the v right, from VARC. Visual learners learn by seeing. They have a high ability for visual recall. They prefer to learn using visual representations. They like graphs, posters, maps, displays. They frequently use hand movements, movements, right? When they're talking, you've seen people do that, and they have a tendency to look upwards when they're thinking. Now, Fleming, the creator of the VARC learning theory, he added the need to recognize that visual learners prefer those graphics. A written word is not as valuable, even when it's written down. It needs to be used in a visual additive. It needs to be with media. It must be more than just words and boxes though. It needs to have some kind of visual graphic component to be really helpful. Auditory. Auditory learners learn by listening. That's pretty simple, isn't it? They favor the audio and they have a high ability to recall anything that they have heard. They prefer repetition, summaries. They benefit most from discussions, lectures, stories, podcasts. These learners have a great tendency to tilt their heads and they'll even use eye movements when they're concentrating or recalling information. Now within this learning theory, Fleming added that chatting and email they are a language for them because they possess those more abbreviations, colloquial terms, slang, and even non-formal language. Let's look at our last learner, kinesthetic. Kinesthetic rely on doing to learn movement, touch, right? They rely heavily, heavily, heavily on interactions between themselves and their environment. They need to have a reaction that is a touch with their body. They will easily recall events or information that's attached to an experience or a feeling of a physical event. Now these learners learn best through field trips, physical activities, manipulating objects and touch. Kinesthetic learners tend to have a high difficulty sitting still. You've seen them. They're the ones that their legs bounce all the time, right? They also are going to need frequent breaks when they are learning. Within this learning theory, there are also what we call multimodal learners, which is often overlooked. These are learners who do not show a defined preference or a statistical score, which is high above the others. These learners possess the capability to access two or more methods of learning, and they may use one mode of learning in one situation and another mode of learning in a different situation. So how do learners really determine their learning style? So Fleming he designed a questionnaire which aids in the identification of this process and then this questionnaire which is following be sure to choose the answer which best reflects yourself for this learning style inventory you just have to record the answer that best fits who you are and all you need to really do is just record on a piece of paper a V for visual, an A for audio, or a K for kinesthetic. So if I have to learn how to do something, I learn best when I watch someone show me how, hear someone tell me how, or try to do it myself. When I read, I often find that I visualize what I am reading in my mind's eye. I read out loud to hear the words inside my head, or maybe I fidget and try to feel the content. When asked to give directions, I see the actual places in my mind as I say them, or I may even prefer to draw them, have no difficulty in giving the directions verbally, and have to point or move my body as I give them. If I am unsure how to, write it in order to determine if it looks right. Spell it out loud in order to determine if it sounds right, or write it in order to determine if it feels right. 
When I write, I am concerned with how neat and well spaced my letters and words appear, often say the letters and words to myself, push hard on my part or the pencil, and can feel the flow of the words. If I had to remember a list of items, I would remember it best if I wrote them down, I said them over and over to myself, or if I move around and used my fingers to name each item. I prefer teachers who use a board or overhead projector while they lecture, talk with lots of expression, or use hands-on activities. When trying to concentrate, I have a difficulty when there is a lot of clutter or movement in the room, there is a lot of noise in the room, or I have to sit still for any length of time. When solving a problem, I write or draw diagrams to see it, I talk myself through it, or I use my entire body or move objects to help me think. When given written instructions on how to build something, I read them silently and try to visualize how the parts will fit together, read them out loud and try to talk to myself as I put the parts together, or try to put the parts together first and read later. To keep occupied while waiting, I will look around, stare, or read. I will talk or listen to others. I will walk around, manipulate things with my hand, or move or shake my feet as I sit. If I had to verbally describe something to another person, I would be brief because I do not like to talk at length, go into great detail because I like to talk, gesture, and move around while talking. If someone were verbally describing something to another person, I would try to visualize what he or she is saying, enjoy listening, but want to interrupt and talk myself, become bored if her or his description got too long and detailed. When trying to recall names, I remember faces, but forget names. I remember names, but forget faces, or the situation where I met the person rather than the person's name or face. Now, go back through each of these responses, and what you're going to do is add the number of responses for each letter, and then enter the total. So if you had six that were visual, you'd put the number six under visual. So then, the area with the highest number of your responses is your primary mode of learning. Now remember, we also have a multimodal type of learning, and that's where if you are pretty well uh, disseminated across the three or maybe you just have two so maybe you could say you're both a visual and a kinesthetic and as that happens you want to pay attention to both of those types of learning styles as we look forward to things that we can do for the visual you might already have been identified as that visual learner and in class what you may want to do is try underlining using different colors symbols charts arrangements on a page you may even want to doodle, maybe draw, and when studying, you want to reconstruct ideas. Also, use that in-class method that you see above underlining colors. You may want to redraw pages from memory or even replace some words with symbols and initials. Now, if you're taking an exam, try to think about what the pictures look like on the page or how did you mark it? What colors did you use? What kind of charts did you have? You might want to draw diagrams on the side of your page or even practice turning your visuals back into words. For auditory, you may want to try attending the lectures and the tutorials and discuss topics and students, explain new ideas, use a tape recorder. This is actually very easy to do with all of the technology we have. Simply record the lecture on your cell phone or your smartphone. Be sure that you describe out loud the pictures and the visuals that you saw because since you're not a visual person, if you were to describe it out loud, that's gonna help you a lot. Also, when you study, remember that you may take really poor notes because you prefer to listen so make sure that you have recorded that lecture then what you do is you expand those notes as you record them you may also want to just put summarized notes on to your audio device 
another idea is to take your notes on three by five cards and then read them out loud. Also try searching for the information. Something very visual and auditory would be like YouTube or Khan Academy. During your exam, listen to your voices and write them down and speak your answers. And if you can't speak out loud, you may want to try speaking inside of your head. For kinesthetic learners, remember that you really are going to use every one of your senses. So make sure that you use as much hands-on opportunities as you can, such as labs or field trips. Use trial and error. Listen to real life examples. And that's very simple to do, especially with the internet today. Be sure that you enter that information into the internet search engine and see what you can find. When you study, your notes might not be very good because again, you aren't going to be that person who's going to take great notes notes but if you put examples in your summaries and you have recorded part of that lecture and you can definitely record it using a camera now you're going to be able to really identify better with that information another thing you can do is as you are re-watching that lecture be sure that you're moving walk around fiddle with something during the exam be sure that you write practice answers and even try role playing the example or the exam before you step into the examination room